Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back to my channel, Accounting for Real. Uh, so glad you can join me today, uh, Accounting for Real. So today, I uh, want to uh, try on a few coats and I want to see how they fit, how they look on me. So, well, let's get started. First, this one right here is one. This is one that, uh, see, fur inside. And, uh, this is one, and then inside is furry. So, see, very nice. So, thanks for joining me today, class. Counting for real. So, let's get a close up on the inside. Let's get a back look. Let's try. Let's try the second one. This is a, a pink jean jacket that I had. You know what I'm talking about? Pink jean jacket. See? Get a close up. Sleeves are nice. Mm -hmm. Let's see what we have next. A little, uh, this coat here is one I wear when it gets a little chilly. Mm -hmm. Put a sweater, you know, uh, put a um, sweat top in the middle, and then you'll be nice and warm. Also, it has a little fur collar, but mm, I don't, you know. It's just, and I had it for some time. It has a little fur in the inside. Mm -hmm. So, let's go to the next one. This is a nice suit jacket. Beautiful. This is one. Mm -hmm. My husband bought for me. Very nice. Mm -hmm. See? And it's sleeves are not long. Okay, it's like a short, you know. And um, I just have to match it up with, um, you know, you can match it up with some dress racks or some, you know, jeans and a pair of heels. Mm -hmm. Jeans and a pair of heels. Mm -hmm. Then I have uh, this is a red a red jacket. This is nice and thick, so when I'm wearing some red, so. I'm wearing my red. Let me turn around a little bit. Close up. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Oh. Just put a, uh, you know, sweat on the inside, and you'll be nice and warm. See? See? And this is a nice little jacket, too. Let me get a close-up. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It looks like a, a pretty as green. Mm -hmm. Can't see the full coat, but you can see how it looks on me. It fits good, too. Mm-hmm. Turn around so you can see how that jacket is made. And the sleeves are nice and long. Mine being one of those jackets uh, my girl Jay had on. But I think hers was black. So this is a nice jacket right here. I'm loving this. I haven't worn it outside yet, but somebody gave me this jacket. My uh, in-laws. Uh... My niece, rather, my niece gave me this jacket. So, and then the inside, is see, the inside. This is pretty. Mm -hmm. Let's see what I have in here. Then I have a uh, I had this jacket here. It's corduroy jacket. Mm -hmm. It's a corduroy jacket that I have. Uh, this is burgundy. Mm -hmm. I have some burgundy corduroy uh, pants. Uh, I have some burgundy corduroy pants that go with this jacket. You see this jacket right here? You have uh, pockets. And this is just a regular seat. The sleeves are nice and long. So when it gets real cold, uh, I can wear it actually now, see, here in Washington, D.C. And uh, my grandson was like, Grandma, I like that jacket. But uh, this is, I uh, put, uh, I'm going to put a coat on top of this. It's be nice. Grandma, my grandson, he's 11 years old. He's like, Grandma, I like that. My granddaughter, she just, she about one and a half. And she just stands and looks at me. And I guess she probably say, hey, Grandma. She's only a one and a half. So, this jacket right here. And then I have a. Uh, jeans jacket. I got see, the other jeans jacket over there is pink. So I haven't even wore this. I need to start wearing this. this is, I forgot I had this one in the closet. Yeah, so jackets like this and look, they still fit long on when I bought it. Mm -hmm. So this is a nice jean jacket. So when you button it up, mm-hmm. Mm hmm close up, see, and also, I, I deal in paparazzi jewelry, see, this is my paparazzi, this is from my paparazzi jewelry line, uh, you can find it, uh, paparazziaccessories.com, 218-618, everything is $5, but they, they do have, uh, some items, items, $20, so, um, jewelry, we deal with, uh, headbands, bracelets, necklaces, earrings, um, we have children, a children's line, and a men line. Items for men. So this is a nice jean jacket, see? And also, it has pockets. It has pockets. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So, and it's it's still a little baggy from when I bought it. I thought I would've got, <coughs> I thought I would've got a little bigger than this, but I had this jacket for about five or six years. Mm-hmm. This is the last one I have about four or five leather jackets, but the weather got a little cold. I got some other jackets in there too. This is my leather jacket, see? And this is even longer. Let's see, my sister-in-law gave me this. So she can no longer wear it, so she gave me actually another leather jacket she gave me. So I really appreciate that. Thanks, sister-in-law. Mm-hmm. So, and this jacket right here, and it fits me pretty good. So, see, this jacket right here, I can also take this jacket and put a sweater under it, a thick sweater with a hood. Mm -hmm. See, this is a genuine leather. Mm -hmm. Genuine leather. So, nice. I like the lining. Mm-hmm. And so, like I said, this is from my line right here. And this is this ponytail is from my uh, my line of uh, bundles I sell. And I usually just take my bundles. Uh, my website, uh, beautyforreal.bigcartel.com. I have my bundles on there. So, I've been wearing this bundle for a while. And I like it. And um, so, this is from my jewelry line. And this is from my bundle line. I used to make wigs with my bundles, but I no longer make wigs. So... But uh, I just sell my bundles on my web page. Uh, so let's get into a uh, little accounting lesson. Just wanted to show you a few little jackets that I do have. And I also have about four or five more jackets in the closet. And uh, so let's do a little accounting. So I just want to, uh, you know, just uh, show a, little, a few little jackets that I do have. And I, I always have my, uh, my Lala. So, so the sun is, oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. And it's a probiotic, so I always have my uh, cheers. Just wanted to show you um, a few little jackets that I do have. You know, a few little jackets, leather jackets, and I also have um, I have some wool coats and stuff. So, but I just wear a little. You know, sometimes I just you know you change over. Sometimes you get tired of wearing the same thing. So uh, today I just want to talk a little bit about. Um, Let's talk about business. We can talk about business. We can talk about accounting. You know, business. In other words, let me talk. Let me tell you a little bit about me and my life. Okay. I have uh, three adult children. Um, three adult children. I have uh, several grandchildren. Probably, my son has one. My son had one, my other son has one, has one daughter. My other son has uh, a son. And then I have grandchildren from my husband's side. So don't know how many, you know, don't know how many that is, you know, but that's something from my husband's side. And my name is Cheryl Herbert Walker. Walker is my married name. So, um... I um, attended Strayer University. Okay, first I started out at UDC. I went to UDC, and I will, I stayed up there for probably no more about a year. University of, University of the District of, District of Columbia. I was studying office administration. Mm -hmm. And my husband told me, and my husband told me, uh, honey, 
You shouldn't be studying office administration. You should be doing business administration. So, I uh, transferred to uh, Strayer, but before I transferred to Strayer, I took uh, several uh, typing courses. I took several typing courses and business courses up at UDC. But uh, my husband said, no, nah, honey, you should be doing business administration, not office administration, because he feels that business administration, business administration was more broad. You know, it covers a lot of ground. Office administration is basically, it basically confines you within an office setting. But business administration is very widespread, because under business administration, at the time I didn't, you know, I was a little younger back in that, them days. But I went on anyway, and I, once I transferred to uh, Australia, uh, I changed my major to uh, business administration. So I was doing business administration, and my husband, he did help me a lot because he already had his business degree. He had his business degree, and he took accounting, business, and law, and all them classes. So he was very much, he was very, uh, I mean, he was much, very, I don't know how to say it, but he was a great help to me. He was a great help to me with my accounting, my business, and my law classes. So I did good in my law class down there. Uh, straight, I took a business law class. Uh, I took uh, several accounting courses. I think it was probably like, I know I took managerial accounting. I took the first basic accounting course. And I ended up having to take, I ended up having to take uh, accounting over because the first time I took it, uh, I didn't do so well in the first, so I had to take uh, can the first accounting course over. That was a... Uh, Introduction to accounting. So I took introduction to accounting twice. Then I had to take managerial accounting. So that was like three classes. Mm -hmm. So accounting was so hard for me, but I pulled myself through. My husband, with my husband's help, he, I know I remember coming home a lot of times. I, I used to sit right at my dining room table, and my husband would work with me with my accounting. And I was struggling with the T accounts in the beginning. I was struggling with the T accounts. And because, you know, when you first learn accounting, you're kind of confused about uh, which side do I debit for increase? I mean, which side do I, yeah, right, which side do I debit for increase? And which account do I debit for increase? Which account do I debit for decrease? And which side? So you got your revenue accounts, your cash accounts, your... Then also, yeah, also you have, um, uh, you know, your accounts payable, accounts receivables, and all of them, you know, different accounts. So sometimes it can get confusing, but I found that I had to, uh, I found that I had to read, 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 and read, and read, and keep reading. I know at UDC, I learned, I think it, I think it was the four, four W's, was the four W's? Yeah, read write and recite and i forgot the other one but i know you say, say read i guess you read again read write recite and read again so in other words you read it and you read it several times sometimes you have to read in other words sometimes we would have chapters to read sometimes we would have the teacher would say hey uh read the chapter read chapters uh of uh, one to six and sometimes the teacher would say, read chapter 1 to 6 or read chapter 1 to 4. Sometimes you would read it one time, you would have to read them again. Mm hmm Sometimes you would, you know, you had to read because I know I did uh, when I was up uh, uh, UDC. And then even when I when I went down Strayer, I transferred to Strayer. And the professor, I had this professor called, uh, named Professor Bush. Oh, he was he was very he was something else he was he was a real good teacher African American teacher and um he was something else but he was pretty smart and he was staying up there and he wouldn't even need a book he could just stand up there and talk he would you know words that he remembered he always used to say, he always used to say history history is replete with these such and such, blah, blah, blah. History is replete. And that was a word I never even heard of. He said, he always used to say, history is replete with these type of things. And I'm like, I never heard that word before. But then, you know what? One day, I finally looked it up. So, I finally looked that word up. And then I had another professor 
Yeah, he used to always say, history is replete with this and this and that, you know. And I was like, where in the world? I never heard that word before, even coming into college. And so, and then it was all, several other words that uh, he would, you know, he would mention, you know, just stand up there uh, giving out his lecture. And then I had another teacher called Dr. Jewel. He was pretty good, too. So Dr. Jewel, he was uh, my business ethics teacher down at University right here in Washington, D.C., uh, oh, he was a good teacher too. He had a very impressive resume. Um, I know he had a bachelor's and master's and a doctorate. And um, I think he might have had two doctorate degrees. And um, I um, I went I went down there one day to get my um, I needed an academic re uh, academic uh, recommendation, so I got one from him. I got one from him, and I got one from my other teacher. And when I went down there, he was like, "Oh, you doing that thing?" He knew I was. Um, he knew I had signed up for my. You know, I wanted to study my PhD, so I was working on that. So I didn't finish, but I did obtain a five about a hundred, no, hundred, hundred five credits. Uh, Capella University. I was doing it online. Capella University. I know my brother-in-law. He he was up there first, and he was like, "Cheryl, you ought to come on over there with to uh." You ought to come over, come over to Capella with me, and work on your PhD. And I was like, "What, really?" And I'm like, "Really?" So I signed up in Capella online and uh, organization and management was my major. And I didn't finish because uh, financial aid became a problem, and you know, so a lot of times once you get a bachelor's degree. You don't get any more grants. You have to deal with loans. So I stopped right, you know, I stopped. I think I I think I finished I finished all my classes, but I had to do the uh dissertation and then we had to do in other words, we had to do the uh colloquial. The co colloquial was like uh you know, like when you if you're in a nursing program, then you have to go and do your in in no words, you're in school. They had a part of the program where you had to do it in school. So we did part of it online. Then we had to do the colloquial, and we had to fly certain places, you know, that offered the colloquial for that particular school. So I didn't do all. I didn't do that. I didn't do the dissertation, and I didn't do the colloquial. But I finished all the courses in my program. Mm -hmm. So. That's cool. I still have my books from that program, but let me get back to Strayer University. So Strayer University was a great starting point for me. I know I had a, a friend of mine over here where I live at. She was down Strayer first. My brother-in-law, he also got his uh, master's down Strayer too. And um, I had another friend over here. Well, I had a friend over here she, where I live at. She was down Strayer first. Because actually, I was taking courses, too, as well at Liberty University. I said, I had so many universities that I went to. But I took courses with Liberty University online. And she came over here one day to visit me. She said, I'm proud of you, Cheryl. And, you know, that's, that's nice you're doing that. She said, but I'm down at University. Why don't you come on down there? And I said, you know what? And um, I said to myself, I didn't tell her that I was coming down there, but I went on down there. And she saw me down there, I guess she was, you know, but I, I haven't told her to this day uh, that I appreciate her telling me to come on down straight. So what I'm going to do, next time I see her, I'll let her know that I really appreciate you telling me to come down straight because that was the best decision I made in my life. One of the best decisions I made in my life. So I'll let her know that one day, but I never told her. I never got a chance to tell her yet, but I'm going to tell her. And um, so... Strayer University was uh, very instrumental in my life, very rewarding, very instrumental, very uplifting. Uh, it, was a, it was a knowledge, it was a very knowledgeable place to be at that time. And I know they have gotten larger now because I know when I, when I first started Strayer, they were, was it 13? It was only 13 universities. Now, I believe they got over 100 uh, campuses. Mm -hmm. So, now everybody's online. You, even now, when I was taking courses there in Australia, 
And I finished Stray 2001. That was the last time I took my degree, 2001. And um, I graduated Stray 2001. And um, that was long, that was what, 19 years ago. Mm -hmm. But I still have all my books I can, I'm able to review. I have my computer. Um, I'm on a computer every day. I'm working on now. I'm working on my uh, building my YouTube brand my, for my YouTube channel. So I do some accounting courses. Uh, I do some accounting lectures, uh, tutorials, if you want to call it. Uh, some business business lectures. I'm doing. I'm gonna be doing some exercise videos, some cooking segments. I want to do everything on my channel. I just had a um, video where I did a little exercise. Uh, tutorial and I just did a uh, you know uh, trying on video trying on different jackets so um, Strayer University Strayer University was very instrumental to me and I appreciate them and I'm glad I went I um so down my major down there was uh, information systems and business so information systems and business Mm-hmm. And um so part of what I learned was uh dealing with information systems, it doesn't have to be uh computer. Information system and an information system can be whatever kind of system you set up within your corporation or your organization, whatever system you feel that you want uh, and you need as a, a system, an information system. How information system is whatever the word says. It's, it's gathering and building and providing and bringing in information. It's an information system. So do you need information? Are you going to use technology to bring that information in? Or uh, pen and paper? Or are you going to use a fax machine? Or whatever uh, you use to bring that information in. Whatever, you know, depending on what type of business that you have. So in other words, I'm running a business, I, I, I'm running a cleaner's business, I clean people's clothes. What type of information system do I need? Do I need technology? Do I need a technology information system? That's what they call uh, information technology. So information technology is when you use technology to bring that information in. But um, most people do use computers, uh, laptops, uh, uh, desktops, laptops, uh, microcomputers micro computers, uh, macro, micro, uh, uh, mini, mini computers, mainframes, uh, super computers, uh, super computers, they um, bring in that information. So super computers, they deal with mathematical uh, transactions. And mainframes, they're able to make, they're able to do a whole lot of transactions all at one time. And those uh, supercomputers, I mean, the uh, uh, mainframes. So it depending on companies, you know, you have you run a big manufacturing company, you might need a mainframe. Uh, but ordinarily, if you are running or working in, you're a manager of, uh, uh, you know, a regular company. And say, for instance, you got a thousand employees, you might just need all client computers. You might just need all client computers that can access uh, databases from their computer, access the database, you know, the server, and access the database for information. You know, in other words, uh, you have a client, you have 100 uh, client computers, you have 100 employees, they all need to use the same file, or two or three of them may use the same file, and excuse me, they can access those files from the server. Or you know, from each from each other's computer. But nine times out of ten, they will access and get the information from the server because it's depending on what topology that that organization have uh, set up. You can have a ring topology, a bus topology, a star or mesh, and then they also had a ring bus, the ring bus topology. So whichever setup. So basically. Uh, the, the topologies are the setups that you have your computer set up in for how you want to receive your information. 
In other words, some topologies are all set up where you can receive information from the next computer, the next client computer, but the other ones you can only receive information from maybe one. So it depends on what setup you want. So, and then, so in other words, the networking uh, professional would be the person that um, will handle those things. So I'm not the networking person, but I did take a networking course. I took a networking essentials down Strand University, and we learned all about the topology, uh, the ring, the ring, the star, the bus, the mesh, ring, star, bus, mesh, uh, bus, and a mesh topology. And it was just basically telling you uh, how the information is going to be transported. It could be transported through, with the bus, it's transported through something they call token token passing. So, in other words, they pass the token from one computer to the next, and that's how you, they receive the information. So, that's that. And as I said, information, information is passed from one computer to the next, so... And then some people may work from home. They work in an organization. In other words, I have a company, uh, Cheryl's Curtains and Flooring. Uh, I, I sell curtains and floors, you know, towels and carpet and those those type of things. So I sell those type of things. And uh, I have that, and I need information. I need my information system uh, to be accurate reliable, trustworthy. I, I have to build my brand. So uh, I have to build my brand so I have uh, products and services that my customers want and need. My customers want and need. So in other words, um, my customers, if they see that my brand is falling down or the competitors in the area, in the same business I'm in, they, they you know, a lot of people do research online. They try to find out which company is the best. In other words, I do the same thing. So, you know what? They might say, hey, well, you know what? I want some flooring put in in my house or my business. So, I want to see what she has to offer or the next business, what they have to offer. Let me let me read up on the reviews. I mean, do they have good, good reviews uh, for their products and their services? You know, because sometimes people don't want to spend their money unless they know more about the company. How long the company been in business? Uh, how long has the company been in business? And what you know? How many reviews do they have? Do, you know, are they, do they have a lot of reviews where people are talking positively about their business? Are there products on on the one? You know. So those are the things that you have to think about. Now you know, since so you're building your brand, sometimes it takes time because I know you have those big retail giants like Target. You have Target, Kmart, Walmart, CVS, uh, you know, those type of companies. Um, I'm quite sure that it took a while to build their brand. So I'm, I'm pretty sure they took a while to build their brand. So how long did it take? I said, I mean, you know, oh, uh, wow, Target, uh, Kmart, uh, Walmart. I just don't know how long they've been in business. I know it's been a long time, but... It takes time to build your brand and build up that trust in your customer. You have to have what the customers want, have what they want. And even uh, Apple, Apple computers. Apple computers, uh, we have uh, HP computers. That's what, I'm, that's what I work on every day, my Hewlett Packard. So how long did it take them to build their brand? How long did it take them, how long did it take them to build their trust up in the customer? I mean, I had this computer right here. I bought this computer in 2018. So this is an 18, this is an 18 computer, Hewlett Packard, and it's, uh, I think it's probably like a 21 inch screen. So I had it for two years so far. So then I got a laptop that I ordered, and it's also a Hewlett Packard. And I had that for about, I said about five, six years now, and it's still working. So I had that computer, so sometimes when you get a nice, sturdy, strong computer, you know those reliable brands, and you know, when you get ready to order again, you're like, oh, I bought a computer from them before. Let me order, um, let me order another one from them because the brand is trusted. And also, you look at customer service. In other words, if you have a problem, can you call them, contact, uh, what you call it, technical support. You know, every computer that I purchase, 
when you order a computer, they give you the little booklet and the warranty paperwork and all that. They give you the phone numbers and all that. Say, hey, if you need technical support, here's the number. So I look at those type of things too. And then when I call, I don't want to just, I don't want the phone to just be ringing and ringing and ringing. And I can't talk to a live operator concerning my computer. You know, so that's that's some of the things. Those are some of the things that you think about. So building your brand, uh, target market. Uh, you want to segment your market when you're running a business. You know, where is it written that you have to have one target market? Everybody talks about target marketing, but you can segment your market and you can target four or five different groups. Because if you target four or five different groups, it depends on the products that you have. But if you only have one set of products, you have one set of products and you um, are only aiming to satisfy one group of uh, customers, then you're losing out. I want a business that I want to provide something in because I feel, in my opinion, everybody needs something. Everybody needs something. I might need something different from the next customer. And that customer, somebody else might need something different from that customer. But everybody needs something. If you can find out that's something that everybody needs, <laughs> then you're in business. <laughs> everybody needs something. So, you know, people be like, oh, yeah, you know what? I got this, uh, this certain target market. No, we don't have to limit ourselves to one target market. In other words, uh, uh, I'm building, I mean, I'm not building, but somebody building an information system for me. But if they, uh, just think if they were to target, you know, different groups. You find out what those those people need in those different groups, and that's how you satisfy them. So, in other words, I'm like I said, like I said, I'm selling uh, curtains and flooring. But, but you know, if I can find, if I can have what you know everybody needs, then I'm all right. But in other words, that probably comes along with probably expanding your product line. So, but everybody not in the market to expand their product line but it's just something to think about but if you can't do that you can always like i said just have uh you can target you know at least two different groups it doesn't have to be only thing i'm saying it doesn't have to be uh set the one group that you target you can target more than one group find out what they want that's a, that's the idea that's that's the idea to find out what two different groups want and then target them So, uh, it's outside world. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, building that information system, uh, I need to bring that information into my organization. I need to keep up with my competitors, my customers, my employees, my manufacturers, my shareholders. I need that information. I need to keep up with the trends in the market. I might want to uh, introduce a new product in the market. Uh, new product. I might want to test test it out in the market. I might not just. I might need to do that research. I need that information coming in my organization. I need the information coming in my organization so I can um, you know um, be able to you know I don't know what I'm doing. I need to know something about that information that uh product before I can move forward. So you can't move forward if you don't have the right information. Information is powerful. Knowledge is powerful. So that's how they go. So class, I'm not going to hold you too long today, but I want to say thanks for joining me because it's almost up on uh, 40 minutes. So building that information system. And uh, another thing, if someone is coming in my organization and they are building an information system for me, I want reliable products. I want an information system that's going to be reliable, uh, trustworthy, reliable. What kind of equipment do I need? I need, um, you know, they build an you know, information system for me, systems, make it plural. Because as I said, I have different offices. I want to put an information system in. I'm using information technology. I'm using information technology as my information system because I need to use technology to get my business to run my day-to-day -day operations in my business. My, my uh, employees, they need that. My customers need, you know, I need to keep up with the latest trends in the market. I need to keep up with the latest 
anything, anything and everything that's going on out in the business world. I need to keep up with that to keep uh, my customers abreast of what's going on. Because my customers may need to come to me for information. They might, they buy a product from me. They might be like, hey, why is this product, why is this product doing this? And why is this product doing that? Uh, where did you get this product from? Whatever, you know, you never know what questions your customers may want when they purchase from you. Then if you don't know nothing about the product, in other words, you, you, um, outsourcing, you outsourcing your products and your products coming in and you selling your products to your customer. The customer had, then you have to know, you want to know about the product that you, you get. In other words, um, I'm manufacturing, manufacturing, flooring and treatments and stuff like that. I need to know my, um, suppliers, how long they've been in business, what, are their products reliable? Because I'm ordering products from them and selling it to my customer, all my customers. So I have to know, uh, I have to make sure their products are reliable. It's like I was, um. I'm not, like I said, I sell bundles on my webpage, uh, Beauty For Real, that big cartel that come. And I, I do sell bundles, and I used to take the bundles and make wigs and stuff. But when I do that, I still, in that type of business, I still have to make sure that these bundles are quality before I sell them to my customer. Uh, are they on, you know, are they lasting? Are they going to last long? I mean, I've been wearing mine for about, shh, about three years now. The same bundles, so they still look pretty good to me. Mm -hmm. So this is my real hair right here, but it's just a bundle right here. One day maybe I do a video to show you how I put my ponytail on, but this bundle right here. So I had this for about three years now. So I just put my little ponytail on the back, but this is all my real hair right here. So I don't wear the wigs because uh, wigs they have to make sure they you have to make sure you. Uh, the person that's putting on your wig, uh, installing your wig, they have to know what they're doing because they have to. I see, I, I look at YouTube and I see um, how they put the glue all around here. And, you know, I don't care to wear the wigs because I'm trying to keep my edges, you know, I don't want my edges falling out. So I try to use my own hair, keep it right here in the front, and I keep it washed and conditioned. And um, I ordered some uh, wholesale natural body care. Check them out too. I ordered some stuff for my granddaughter for Christmas. They have some hair growth balm, hair growth balm, conditioner, and shampoo, and hairspray oil, hairspray oil, and um, her products are nice, and they're all, all natural. Wholesale natural, www.wholesalenaturalbodycare.com. So I've been uh, ordering stuff from her, from her for about two years now, and it smells so divinely. She uses different types of uh, fragrances in her uh, products, they're all natural. She got a nice skincare line. Uh, she has a line for uh, people that wear dreads and stuff for that. She got skin, skincare line, and hair care line. Uh, she makes her own homemade soap. I'm going to order some soaps one day. I want to order some soaps from her and then I'll probably put them in my video. i bring it, you know, display them on my video so I'll let you all see. The soaps look nice. She makes them about this big, some of them. And they're all homemade. So just imagine somebody, she's been in business for a long time. And um, imagine somebody, you know, you're making your own soaps. You got your own skincare and hair care line. She got a nice little, when you go online, you can see her. Sometimes she had videos. And they show you inside her store, her 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 store. She'll show you how they make her products, how, they, how she make her products. She make her own products. But she had people that work with her. And then she have... Um, if you want to start your own business, she, you can, I think it costs you about 150 to 200 and she'll make up the products for you, whatever kit that you sign up for. And then when she sends them to you, you just put your business things on the bottom. And um, so she do that type of thing too, Wholesale Natural Body Care, www.wholesalenaturalbodycare.com. Very nice company. So... I just want to say thanks for joining me today and uh, hope to see you back here again. Same place, same channel. Cheers. Um, so hope to see you back here again. Same place, same channel. So I want to say uh, you all have a good one.